Greetings fellow downwind faster than the wind fans. Ridge Runner here. Yes, this is what I look like. This is what I sound like. This is the first of a series of videos I'm going to do uh, documenting the work I'm doing with the uh, downwind faster than the wind cart, or carts I'm building. This one is my cart number two, uh, the guts of it, which I'm going to use to demonstrate uh, the topic of this video, which is how we can use the blades of this uh, rotor in both turbine and propeller mode, and how the transition from turbine to propeller and back is a very continuous and natural thing. Okay, first let's cover some basics. Um, a propeller blade is nothing more than a rotating wing, and to illustrate that I've added a little visual aid here, a pilot on the edge of the wing who happens to be thermaling around. It might be JB or Spork. Uh, I was too lazy to make two of them so they can't fly together today. Um, but I've located it out here at the three-quarter point. And why is that? Well, if, if you've got a rotating, rotating wing, the velocity is going to be zero at the center. It's going to be maximum at the tip and it's going to vary linearly from zero to the maximum. So it's going to be a straight line that goes from zero up to the velocity out here. And the lift, if we assume a constant chord wing, which this one isn't, but if imagine just a constant chord wing, same width, the lift is a function of the square of the velocity. And so the lift distribution is going to be a second order quadratic that goes like this. And the centroid of a second order curve is located at the three quarter point. So what I've done here is summed all of the pressures of the that acting on the front and the back of the blade and placed a total aerodynamic force normal to the top surface of the airfoil located at the three quarter point. And that's what this little stick is. You can see I've got sticks on on both of these, and these sticks represent the total aerodynamic force on each of these blades, and they will help demonstrate how the turbine versus propeller works. Here's a side view of our Mini BB wannabe. Now the vehicle is moving this way, the wind is blowing this way, the propeller is rotating clockwise as viewed from the rear, counterclockwise as viewed from the front, and at this side view you can see our variable pitch quite nicely. Now there's two particular speeds that have interest here. One is when the vehicle is going at zero ground speed. At zero ground speed the apparent wind on this blade, the front blade here, is coming straight from the rear. The other interesting speed is when the vehicle's traveling at precisely wind speed. Now at precisely wind speed, the wind hitting this blade, or the, the air hitting this blade, does not have a component coming from the rear or from the front. Its only component is coming from its induced wind due to its rotation, which is coming straight down for the front blade which is moving straight up. So at wind speed, the cart, the blade, the air hitting the, this blade is coming straight down. At zero ground speed, the apparent wind is coming from the rear. Now, what happens as it starts off, the wind starts off at this angle, the angle of attack hitting this blade or the, will clock around. It'll clock around as it speeds up, as it speeds up, as it speeds up until it reaches wind speed, at which point this will be straight down, and as the cart goes faster than the wind, assuming it does, the apparent wind seen by this blade will have a forward component coming rearwards. So the wind will start off here, clocks around until it reaches wind speed, and then it'll reach a maximum speed which is determined by advance ratio, the pitch of the blade, the diameter of the wheels, the gearing ratio, uh, the equation that determines that. 
Let's take a look at what we can do here. This has variable pitch and this one's got a lot of range. In this particular case it's got a lot of range in that direction. Now notice here that the leading edge of the blade is in the pointing rearward, the trailing edge is here, the curved surface is on the top here, and this is in a very good position, very good angle of attack here to push this blade up. Notice that the total aerodynamic force has got a large component in that direction, which is the direction that wants to rotate it. What we have here is a turbine blade. The component in this direction, which is small, is the drag, which corresponds to thrust. So we've got a small amount of drag that's doing thrust. We have a large amount of rotational force, which is going to tend to rotate it in the way it needs to go to drive the wheel. So this is a turbine where the blade drives the wheel. Now notice as it goes up, it's going to, the front side of this belt is going to be tense. Now, as that wind clocks around, we can adjust our, we can adjust our pitch, or beta angle if you will. We can adjust it so that as the wind clocks around, we can maintain the perfect angle of attack, assuming that whichever airfoil we have here, there's going to be an optimal angle of attack. We can maintain that optimal angle of attack all the way from zero ground speed up through wind speed all the way up to top speed. So we can maintain a perfect angle of attack at one radial station throughout the entire speed range. And notice how that works. Okay, so once again, there's startup. It's a turbine blade. And then as it as we go faster, as the wind clocks around, and then there's propeller mode. Now this one we can see now that there's another interesting speed. Now notice, okay, there's a propeller. There's turbine. Propeller, turbine. But there's one right between where notice that those two are parallel now. This is the point where the total aerodynamic force on this blade is straight forward for both blades. And that's 100% thrust. Notice that there's no upward component, there's no downward component. In other words, this thing is pinwheeling. There is no, we don't need a torque to drive it as a propeller, and it won't provide a torque as a turbine. So it's like right in between turbine land and propeller land. There's propeller, turbine, propeller, turbine. So that, in a nutshell, explains how we can use a variable pitch with a large negative range to have an almost ideal angle of attack throughout the speed range. Now, of course, there's going to be a twist on this blade as, it, as the radial station goes out, its angle is going to change. And that can only be optimized for one particular speed, which is going to be your maximum speed. And Spork obviously designed it for a specific maximum speed. And so if these, others, uh, these other pitch angles and speeds, it's not going to be optimal throughout the entire radial range. But we can optimize it for one station. And I think it's going to work pretty darn good. But anyway, that's it in a nutshell.